We are back now with a consumer confidential you can all relate to. We all get those annoying phone calls. They're from unusual area codes, or sometimes it's just a number that's similar to our mm -hmm. own. They're becoming a common way for scammers to steal your information. And if you've been targeted, believe me, you're not alone. Some 59 million of us have recently lost cash to phone scams with new technology, making it easier than ever for them to make those robocalls. Mm -hmm. NBC News senior consumer investigative correspondent Vicky Wynn is here in the studio uh, to make sure that, that you don't become a victim. So, Vic, I mean, first of all, 59 million, that's a staggering amount mm, of folks who get scammed out of money on their phones. But, but let's say you get a call from a person who claims to be like a, me, a rep for a medical services company, and they say, you know what, we need to do this test, but we need your Medicaid number. Yes, this is really common. Right. That, this is what I've actually heard about. What, what should those people do? So really important to think about this. According to aging.com, there's really three categories for Medicare fraud. And right now it's taking a twist with COVID. But generally, someone is going to call and either offer you a free test or free medical supplies. All they need is your Social Security number and your <laughs> Medicare number and a credit card to handle the shipping costs. Hmm. No, hang up on that person immediately. This is just an attempt to get your personal information. The other one is they're trying to verify your identity again phishing for your personal information. And the last one is, oh, you know what? You overpaid with your Medicare. We're going to give you a refund. Mm -hmm. They're all very tempting offers, right? But they're all just designed to get personal information from you. So if anybody asks you for that, hang up right away because Medicare is never going to call you and ask for that information. Mm. This next one, I remember happening when my brother was younger because my dad got a phone call and he said, hey, dad, it's Mike. I need help. Wow, and this happened my, to you. This happened years and years ago, and it's still happening. Someone yes. pretends to be a child, you know, maybe with a popular name, and, mm -hmm. they, and they can kind of get in. How do you know if it's actually a loved one And everyone kind of sounds like Mike, right? They're yes. calling in a panic. This is a variation on something that's also called the grandparent scam. Often what they're trying to do is get you in a panic. Either they need ransom money or they need bail money. And often they target the elderly because, you know, they. it's like, oh, Johnny, of course yeah. I'm going to help you, Johnny. Right. The first thing you should do is hang up, number one, because the odds of someone calling you because they're holding your child or relative right. for a ransom is, yeah. like, very, very, very small. Right. Yeah. And if you're worried, call the police, right? right? But if, let's say, let's play it out. Let's say you stay on the line and you think, okay, is this Mike? Well, first, check your caller ID. If it's someone close to you, odds are their number it's should be in your phone. phone. Yeah. Right. Number two, put them on speakerphone. See if someone else in your house can listen to this call Recognize if you're really worried. Voice. Ask them a question that only they would know. Mm -hmm. Like, what was the name of our fish that died two mm -hmm. years ago? JoJo? No, we didn't have a fish. Hang up. Right. All of this is designed to get information out of you and freak you out and get you to, you know, wire money or give up your personal mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. So that's the number one thing. Just think of it this way. If someone came up to you in real life and, and said, hey, I could give you some free stuff or, hey, I'm holding your, you know, grandson for ransom. You would walk away from right, that person. Exactly. Do the same thing if they're calling you or reaching out to you online. Mm -hmm. With everybody uh, ordering, especially during the pandemic, going to Amazon or different services, and now they're calling and saying, oh, uh, we want to process your refund, but we need some information. Yes. So, like Scammers are really trying to capitalize on the good name of huge companies. And they can do it in a really convincing way. I mean, these impersonation calls, this is the number one complaint to the Federal Trade Commission. 650,000 complaints about this last year wow. alone. So the number one thing you want to do is... Okay, don't call me, I'll call you. If, if you think it's a service that you have and it may be a problem, hang up, look up the number mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. or on the back of your credit card or your banking information call and call them and ask if there's a real issue. Because usually no one's going to call you unsolicited yeah. with issues and ask you for personal information. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't happen. But they, they do that to try to, to get that money right. from you. What yeah. happened to the do not call list? So the FTC still has it. You absolutely should register for it. It doesn't stop all of the calls. But these days, there are apps that are typically free that can also help you b block um, calls. And then, of course, the number one thing is just always hang up. If, you, if you're in doubt, hang up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Th that's the simplest way to walk away from a scam. That was great. Or a family yeah. member. <laughs> or, <laughs> facts. Facts. Thank you, Vicky. Good yeah. to have you back. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.